warm greetings to all present here today. We are having a new study today, and its title is The Alien War Will Be Over on Earth. With large steps and rapidly, through the mainstream media, efforts have been made to prove the existence of a powerful extraterrestrial intelligence that has been here on Earth for a long time. The rulers of this world have been aware of their existence and have been cooperating with them for a long time. World's leaders that do not know the Bible are not aware of their supernatural strength and super intelligence, so without God's protection they have become easy prey and servants of these powerful extraterrestrial beings. These beings have become their gods to whom the rulers of the world worship, and now they enthusiastically want to present them to us so that everyone will accept and worship them. Will we ever be in a place to hear the real truth from those who have been deceiving us all along and worked wholeheartedly to keep the truth hidden from the public? Soon, when the existence of UFOs becomes officially recognized, will we again listen to this information from the controlled mainstream media on this matter? We will listen to the lies about help from an extraterrestrial side in ending war on Earth and bringing world peace, about getting free energy and a jump in our evolution and similar topics, which goal would be to gain our trust that they want us well? Is it realistic to expect that we should now hear the real truth from those who deceived us all the time? Former President of Russia Dmitry Medvedev said for television, With the suitcase containing the codes for nuclear weapons, the President of Russia received a special secret document. It contains information about extraterrestrials who visited our Earth. In addition, they give us a report on the secret service which controls extraterrestrials. These two documents are obtained together with the nuclear codes. I can't tell you everything so as not to cause panic. A warning is written in the Holy Scriptures. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty plan of these highly intelligent but very evil extraterrestrial beings is to establish one world government and religion through the world rulers and leaders in order for the world to worship them as gods. When that happens, people who have rejected the one and true God, the Father, their Creator, and because of their free will that they abused will then be left without God's protection at the mercy of these wicked beings. Their ultimate goal is that all Earth's inhabitants who allow themselves to be possessed and subjugated by them can be destroyed or used in the final conflict between them and God's governance. For this reason, our world and this Earth is a place where this alien war that started long ago will finally end. When and where did this alien war begin and why will it end on our earth? Scriptures teach us that the Father created everything through Christ and for Christ. It says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. The most powerful extraterrestrial beings that have been created are the angels, and the highest of all the angels rebelled and dragged a third of the angels with him into the war against God's reign. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. 
Angels are the ultimate work of the Creator's extraterrestrial wisdom. They are super intelligent and extremely beautiful creatures. About the rebellion of the covering cherubim says, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sun full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. The Father of the Most High equated his only begotten Son with himself and gave him authority, glory, and a throne. He did this for the reason that Jesus is the only divine being who, by being born from the Father, inherited the Father's divine nature and has absolute love and goodness, which none of the created beings possess. Satan was jealous of Jesus, wanting the glory and position that the Son of God had. However, he did not want to have the glory of Christ's character. He became envious, jealous, and very displeased, and spread his displeasure among the angels. He managed to draw a third of the angels to his side in rebellion against God and his Son by using deception and lies. He accused God of being biased and that by exalting Jesus, he done him injustice and disdained him. That is why God allowed this alien war to start for a certain time in order to reveal the true character of the Father, of the Son, and of the Satan. God showed mercy to Satan for a long time and gave him the opportunity to repent and see his sin. However, he did not want that and rejected such an idea. After that, he turned to open rebellion and war against the Father and the Son. When Lucifer began to sin, God removed him from his exalted position as a covering cherub and placed the angel Gabriel in his place. That was his first cast out from this most exalted position. After the first cast out, and removal from the high position of the covering cherub, Satan could visit all the other created places, or according to the scriptures, the second heaven, and could communicate with them. After these events, the Father with Christ creates the earth and people in their image. Satan, who hates God and Christ, now begins to envy people who are made in the image of the Father and His Son. His only goal since the creation of man in the image of the God has been to destroy people who resemble the Father and the Son. In John he says he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. At the creation of man, God Father said to his Son, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. In the same way, it was not good for God the Father to be alone, and for this reason he begat an helper, a friend in his likeness, who will be of the same divine species as he is. The only begotten means the only born, and the firstborn also, or monogenesis in Old Greek, which means the only one of such kind, or species. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. 
Eve was begotten from Adam's bosom, and it was a picture for all the created creatures to show them how Jesus was also born or begotten from the Father's bosom. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman because she was taken out of man. So Jesus is of the same substance and the same spirit as the Father is, and that is why the Father gave him his name, the Lord or God, because he was begotten or born of God. Jesus is God, begotten by God, and he is his only begotten firstborn. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. In the same way there are two in the image of God, but they are harmoniously as one body, as a husband and a wife in a marriage. That is why today they are working so hard to destroy the marriage and perception of who the father and the mother are, because by this way the image of God is also damaged, and the children do not really know who their parents are. Demonic malice consists in the fact that they want to deceive every person and separate them from God, so that everyone becomes a rebel and everyone loses the eternity that God gives us. Satan seeks to deceive all people into rebellion and war against God's reign, in order to have his complete foothold in this world. Giving in to Satan's deception and lies, Adam and Eve sinned and sided with the rebels, turning from God's to Satan's side. Thus the alien war was transferred to this earth, and Satan took power from man and created his strong foothold on earth. From the fall into sin, Satan made himself the emperor and representative of this earth in the heavenly councils until the cross, when Jesus as the second Adam defeated him and became the representative of the earth. The other creatures did not fall for Satan's lies, and they remained faithful and on God's side. Thus Satan with his angels became the only ruler on this earth. God had a plan to incarnate his son, to become a man, and as a man, to overcome Lucifer's temptations and to create a new, God-loyal and faithful humanity, which will have a correct picture in their head of the great alien war that is being waged between Christ and Satan. If Jesus had not offered himself to become man for us, for which reason God placed us under undeserved protection from these powerful but sinister beings, who wishes only death and nothing else, our case in this war would have been hopeless. These powerful beings would force us against our will under the threat of death to participate in this alien war in the front lines on their side, fighting against the Creator's reign, who keeps and sustains us in life. The Creator felt terribly sorry for us that He gave us the opportunity to get to know Him as well as the wickedness of these beings and under His protection to make the final choice ourselves. The Creator sent His only begotten Son, the only one of His divine kind, to reveal to us how much He loves us and how much He is willing to sacrifice for us. Jesus came as a man and in this alien war he took stand in our place. And that meant that he had to be placed under the complete rule of these evil beings without mercy, and that is God's protection. That was our position, because by falling into sin we rejected God and as Satan's partakers choose him as our master. When Jesus came to this world, alien beings persecuted him from birth until death. However, he was under God's protection like every man. Let us remember Christ's humiliating birth in a stable. Then the killing of children by Herod, who was inspired by these evil spirits, who was by this way seeking to eliminate Christ. These extraterrestrial beings also visibly appear to Christ. Personally, the highest and most intelligent in rank, the one whom Jesus created long ago, has now come and offered him all the kingdoms of this world, if he falls at his feet and worships him. The fallen aliens offered him a life without Calvary in this world, in sweetness, 
wealth and glory, but on the condition that he would wage war against the Creator, who is love. Jesus knew very well what this meant and how good his Father was and how evil these beings were. Jesus said no, and a complete no. I will not take part in the rebellion at any cost, no matter what it costs me. And indeed, it cost him a lot. Jesus rejected Satan's lies with abhorrence and opposed these sinister plans, thus sealed his destiny in this world. It is very important to point out something here. Thanks to God's plan of salvation that the Father and the Son made and realized, we are all placed under God's grace or protection that we did not deserve, because our first parents rejected the Creator and went over to the side of the bitter enemy of God, and thus we all became rebels and enemies of God. These extraterrestrial beings could easily destroy us as their collaborators if we were not all under God's protection. However, we are all placed under God's grace and protection because Jesus chose to die for us while we are still without God and on the enemy's side. We did not deserve this protection. It was given to us thanks to the fact that according to the plan Jesus was supposed to become a man and take the place of us rebels and be rejected by God as God's enemy. In the last three hours of darkness on the cross, Jesus was left without God's grace and was rejected by God and without God's protection as the greatest rebel, completely in enemy's territory and under all the pressures of these alien intelligences. But Christ's love is fascinating and thrilling. He was completely rejected by God in the enemy's territory. He experienced the greatest torture because of his faithfulness to God, when it no longer had any meaning or benefit for him. In rejection of God and in enemy's territory, Jesus chose to remain loyal to God although in rebellious territory and environment, and faithful loyal and obedient to God's side until death. Now, as the second Adam, he gives us his life, where our spirit and his spirit unite and we become participants in Christ's divine nature and a new humanity that loves God and is on God's side. Satan's presence in heaven after Christ's ascension led to a war in heaven and we know the outcome. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. This is the second cast out of Satan. Since then heaven, where the sinless creatures are, has been forever close to Satan. This cast out of the great fallen one brought indescribable joy among all sinless beings. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. The great alien war between Christ and Satan has been transferred from heaven to this world and will finally end here. We are all active participants in this war, whether we like it or not. Jesus warned us many times about the sinister intentions of these extraterrestrial beings. To the priests of those times who unknowingly placed themselves under their authority, he openly said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I will tell you the truth, ye believe me not. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. So it is the same today. Those who are of God follow God's word, the Bible, and those who are not 
have the appearance of piety and follow a tradition that is contrary to the Bible. At the end of Earth's history there will be only two sides, the sheep and the goats. He says of it, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Despite the warnings that the Lord gave us, today God worship Satanism and sin of every kind has become the religion of many. Satanism has become popular and most people are joining the rebellion, rejecting to be God's sheep and wanting to become Satan's goats. Today's self-styled world elites say that the Bible is a book of speech of hate because it exposes exactly these plans they are making with these alien beings. Goats are advertised to us in music. During the opening of the tunnel in Switzerland, at a royal court, alleged vicars of Christ showing the satanic sign of the goat's devil's horns, which means we love you, Satan. The same words, your father is the devil, would be addressed by Jesus today to many rulers and priests of our time that their father is truly powerful but fallen extraterrestrial being. The near future will show the truth of these words of Christ and that this world is ripe for God's quick intervention. How are we all drawn into this alien conflict? The powerful extraterrestrial civilization deceived our first parents and took the power over the earth. This is how these highly intelligent and evil beings have been over this earth and have been there for nearly 6,000 years, deceiving us, poisoning and destroying us. Now the aliens want to introduce themselves to us through those who serve them. They are trying to deceive the whole world and, if possible, the chosen ones. For this reason, we are given a warning about these extraterrestrial beings. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The only defense is to call upon and cast out these beings in the name of Christ. In my name shall they cast out devils. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Lord tells us that our war is not a war with blood and flesh, that is with people, as many think that our greatest problem is some sort of a deep state or some super rich families. Someone far more powerful is behind them and controlling the situation, and those bewildered looking at him as the ruler of this world, enthusiastically want to present him to all people, to show their God who gave them money, influence and fame. But they don't know that he took their souls, because he didn't tell them that. Our war is with alien principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, and with the spirits of wickedness under the heaven. To summarize, what did the Lord tell us when he warned us about these powerful extraterrestrial beings? They are spirits of wickedness, which means they are super powerful but extremely sinister beings. Since they are spiritual beings, they can materialize but also dematerialize before our eyes. This means that they can suddenly appear but also disappear. They can also take any material form they want. So their form of appearance in which their materials can be infinitely wide. They can take the form of a human, any animal, chimera, which is half human, half animal, 
small grey aliens, large green ones, and others. In old times, fallen angels used to frighten and deceive people, turning into wirewolves, witches, vampires, and various other terrible creatures. Today, they most often turn into reptiles and aliens, which is talked about a lot of today. They can fool around with us and deceive us as much as they want because we have rejected God's word and its counsels, which are our only defense against these deceptions. Back in Eden, when Eve rejected God's warning against these deceitful beings, Satan took the form of a winged serpent and spoke to Eve, telling her some of his powerful sweet lies. Being amazed and astonished, she fell for the trick, and we know what further happened to our first parents. We bear the consequences of their choices from birth. If they had remained faithful to God, they would have remained immortal, and we would have been born today as immortal beings. Thus obedience to these alien beings and disobedience to God has led us to the situation that we are in today. The plan of these alien demonic spirits and world leaders who have become entangled in their trap, from which only God the Father and Jesus can deliver them, is to present themselves to this world, as they say, by the year 2027. The ultimate goal of demonic alien intelligence is the destruction of everything that resembles the true God. And that means literally every person. They mention a golden billion or half a billion people who are enough to stay on earth. However, the real truth is that in the end they will not need them either because everything that bears the image of God must be destroyed and wiped off the face of the earth forever. What will be the end of all people who are without God's protection as well as the ruling satanic elite, who enthusiastically wanted to present to this world powerful extraterrestrial beings whom they worshipped and served? The earth will be destroyed for thousand years and not a single person will be alive on earth after the Armageddon nuclear war. Since God's grace has ended, and the unrepented have lost God's protection and completely fallen under the rule of these beings they admired, now they will force them to destroy the whole earth in a nuclear war, so that all who serve the true God will be murdered, so that none of the faithful would be alive to see Christ's second coming. In the end, the father of lies will convince them all that he and his aliens are good while God the Father and Christ are bad aliens, who are coming to spoil the very organized paradise or new world order that they have created. A seventh plague occurs in which the Father and the Son appear with the angels. Great confusion and fear reign among the unrepentant. They are aware that the true God has won and that by hating and persecuting his people they actually hate him. In great panic and agony driven by the struggle for survival to preserve their own lives, they try to shoot at God hoping to avoid his judgment and destruction. The order is coming to use all the modern weapons left after the Armageddon against the Father and the Son. It is the last insane attempt that sinful and fallen humanity will make against God and his Son, It is sad that deceived creatures will shoot at their creator who maintains them in life and who made the greatest sacrifice for their eternal good and salvation by giving his son. After that, the saints spent the seventh millennium on the third heaven, while during that time the unrepented are in their graves, while the fallen angels are bound in the abyss. The scripture says about it, All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, everyone in his own house. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed the land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. At the end of the seventh millennium, the third coming of Christ, with the saved in the heavenly Jerusalem, will follow and it will be followed by the resurrection of the unrepentant and the release of the fallen angels from the abyss. Fallen aliens and fallen humans will then attempt to surround and conquer the heavenly Jerusalem, he says of it. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, 
encompassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Then every unrepentant person who has ever participated in this alien war against God and Christ will be destroyed in the lake of fire, whether they be fallen men or fallen angels. Thus the long-started alien war will end with the total destruction of all rebels on this earth. The Creator will then create a new heaven and a new earth. The alien war is over. There are no more sin, no sinners. All of God's creation is pure. Harmony, love, peace and joy flow through the endless ages of eternity. All that has been created, living beings in nature, in magnificent glory and beautiful perfection, through immeasurable times, show that a Creator is love. May the Lord help us to be in God's kingdom, and on that day that you and I may find ourselves on his side. May the Lord help us in that. God bless you all until our next fellowship. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand, to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor.